My name is Fadwa Wazwaz. I just wanted to speak a little bit about disinformation versus censorship. It's important for us to see the situation like this. Justice requires consistency and integrity in both actions and words. Like the Quran tells us, why do you say that which you don't do? It's a very beautiful, thought-provoking question. So we measure your morals, not based on your proclamations and declarations and moralizing and finding people to praise you for character and morals that you don't carry. You have not demonstrated, you do not uphold. We measure your morals based on your actions and your words, which we are seeing as clear as day in your own videos, in your own articles. So when terrorists are speaking against terrorism and those propagating or amplifying this information and misinformation are condemning such activities. And those who indulge in sadism and rape denounce these actions. Speaking up against evil while actively engaging in it is darvo and a crime. It's not justice. Every criminal and every oppressor engages in darvo. That means that they don't see themselves as a criminal. They don't see themselves as a transgressor. They see themselves as projecting their transgressive diseases, uh, criminal behavior onto their victim. So they play Darwin. They deny, they attack, then they reverse victim and offender. So how do we determine right from wrong um, disinformation from censorship? How do we determine? How do we measure the two? Like we have a conscience and we don't want to spew disinformation. And we have a conscience and we don't want to support criminals. Well, the measurement really is the actions. And also disinformation is not fought in the dark. You can't tell if something is disinformation if we're all being forced to live in alternate reality, where the criminal is the only one speaking and the criminal is the only one telling us about their justifications and their rationalizations for their crimes. And that's the only one that is speaking. That's not fighting disinformation that is fighting transparency, and that is, that is actually a form of censorship of the truth. In the Quran, we learn that Moses faced the magicians who were spewing disinformation. And society at the time lived in such a way that it was nurtured by disinformation and misinformation. The truth was never allowed to emerge. Moses came through the openness and transparency. He allowed the doors of fighting disinformation. Again, when you're the only one speaking and those who can prove your facts are, are lies, are silence, this is called censorship. This is not fighting disinformation. The other thing to note is, are those who claim to be fighting this information, do they act above the law? Like fight the ICC, fight the IGC, IGICJ, International Criminal Court of Justice. Um, are they subject to retributive laws? And I mentioned a uh, saying by Prophet Muhammad about seek refuge that I should oppress or be oppressed? Are they subject to retributive laws as in an eye for an eye? If they are not, then they're not qualified to write legislation.
there are 8 billion people in the world. Criminals and transgressors should not make laws to govern others because the laws that they make are, as we have seen, I can kill you, but you can't kill me. I can steal your land, but you can't fight for your land. I can spread hatred about you, make videos and movies, hate on you, but you cannot even like express the pain and suffering that I put on you. So this is the type of reality that we see, this alternate reality, when we allow those who reject retributive laws to write the laws. It's not acceptable to oppress, persecute, colonize people, then outlaw their speech, violate their right to justice, including retribution and retaliation. And that's what October 7th is. And as much as you want it to be a terrorist attack against Israel, we're going to have to push back because that's not just and that's not moral. Gaza was occupied. Negotiations took place, but Israel has a pattern and a policy of if it doesn't like the negotiation, it doesn't like that it cannot use fear to compel the negotiator to be to basically accept and write and sell their land through subjugation and dominance of their power, then it will kill the negotiator. They have a pattern and a policy of killing the negotiator. So you can't talk with somebody who acts and lived and has a history of engaging in war crimes and terrorism, war crimes and terrorism, including killing the negotiators who are trying to end and to bring a just system which allows them to grow and allows Palestinians to also have a right to freedom and to grow in liberty. They don't want that. In their own words, Netanyahu has been very clear he wants to destabilize the entire region. They have been very clear that they want to take as much land and that they will only speak peace with the intention to just buy time as they're constantly taking more land and more land and then kill the negotiator and then again negotiate, negotiate, then kill the negotiator. This doesn't, this is not a way to bring justice to a region. Those engaged in these tactics and those engaged in these practices are not qualified to govern, to rule, and to legislate laws. They should be called out and they should be asked to step down. Again, how do we identify disinformation? We don't identify it through censorship of voices we want to oppress, abuse, and deny justice, then criminalize their voices. We rely on critical thinking skills, fact-checking sources, and seeking out multiple perspectives to identify this information and misinformation. Censorship only serves to silence dissenting voices and hinder the pursuit of truth and justice. We also have to ask very important questions. Are the sources biased? The ones that are fighting and spewing against um, they want to like fight disinformation and misinformation. Do they have a conflict of interest? Are they credible sources? Do they take money from organizations that have a political agenda? Because when we are fighting disinformation, these are very important questions that we need to reflect on. And a lot of times it's basically we use sensational 
uh, manipulative arguments. And we, again, we claim that we are fighting disinformation and misinformation. But again, sensationalism, bias, conflict of interest, manipulative arguments are not credible sources and voices to fight disinformation. We have to ask ourselves. And an example of that, like when individuals have a DNC convention and they go on this on stage and they spew disinformation about Palestinians and they don't allow a Palestinian voice or Palestinian sources that can provide sufficient evidence to show that those claims that they are making are false, then that is not fighting disinformation. That is censorship of the truth. Do most members of the DNC take money from APAC? Does APAC have a political agenda? Does money indicate bias and conflict of interest? Are biased sources qualified to write laws to help us determine what is disinformation and what is censorship? These are important questions when we're listening to people. The fact that they're a congressperson, that they have a large following, that they can laugh, joke, and you know they have this what do they call it dnc the the hope or the vibe you know i you know all this type of you know placebo type uh that's not how we measure something is disinformation transparency openness bring critical voices that can respond and demonstrate that what is being said is either true or false as moses faced the magicians that's how you fight disinformation. Up until now, 100 years of colonialism in the Middle East over Palestine by Zionist, the majority of people still do not understand what Zionist, the full total um, damage and criminal behavior that they have inflicted on Palestinians. So how could you be fighting this information if that very same organization, APAC, which is trying to shut down transparency and openness about what Zionists have done in the Middle East, is giving funding to these same members who want to legislate laws that govern us so that their criminal behavior is hidden and then we are led to believe that those who are seeking justice are the criminals i hope this was sufficient for us to reflect on and we learn to differentiate between fighting disinformation and censorship of the truth thank you very much assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh